This video is brought to you by Knowledge at the Australian School of Business. For more information, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au. You know, I think uh, for countries uh, to utilize their talents uh, for in the areas of e-health and advancing the economic growth, the, one of the foremost things that the countries have to do is to have uh, e-health strategic plan, mm -hmm. an e-health roadmap, an e-health framework. Uh, and the e-health framework in this case is the operating modalities of how best to operationalize uh, electronic information systems, ICT use, the information communication technology use for better health outcomes. Mm. So the countries need to kind of start at the highest level to have an e-health plan. And the business schools to a large extent can be a facilitating mechanism for understanding how best to use ICT for promoting health. In other words, the intellectual power that the countries have need to understand there is a need for a broader framework mm. and help facilitate. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for countries to kind of operationalize. Now, there is a relationship here in so far as uh, understanding ICT use for, for better health outcomes is not just purely a health agenda. It's an economic growth agenda. Countries constantly plan, especially planning commissions, uh, that reports to heads of state, plan for how do we grow, mm. you know, a percentage of growth. And they have different sectors. In the health sector, the growth can be easily accomplished if they were to account for ICT implementation. And ICT creates opportunities for software vendors to develop software applications, for hardware vendors to develop specific hardwares, and just create a business transaction mm. in every sector of health. And at the same time, considering the use of mobile communication for people who are already use, utilizing this for various purposes, can receive health information if it were to be properly integrated and managed. And I think that's really what uh, you would foresee as uh, what business opportunities are and how to uh, engage schools and, and communities to get involved in this. Yeah, Ramesh, I, I completely agree. I think that, that underpinning of the, the economic development, in fact, is, is one key social determinant of health, isn't it? So that, in fact, if you have a strength of the community and the economic strength, it actually improves health. I mean, as a physician, as a practicing emergency doctor, and also looking at uh, e-health enthusiasts, if you will, that it's not only important for us to actually get health professionals engaged, but really the interprofessional and interdisciplinary collaboration that we can benefit from our relationship business schools. Understanding that how do we understand health economics and how does that influence health and vice versa, mm -hmm. that really we can then collectively impact on, on the health of society, if you will. I think technology really help us not only to say, well, we can deliver health services, but as you collect the data of those individuals, not only do we help monitor disease, but really get into the area of monitoring wellness. And with that, with the business school's uh, capacity building and ability to help us understand the cost implication, mm -hmm. cost effectiveness, and also health economics, it really helps all of us move forward. And I think a business school will be tremendously exciting to build that type of capacity together with health professionals and also with decision maker process to, to move forward on that. You know, I mean, I, I hope you agree that uh, we need a curriculum. Yes. We need a curriculum of e-health and we need a curriculum of operationalizing e-health. And business schools and the schools of medicines and other institutions of higher learning needs to start incorporating yes. the modality of how do you teach uh, e-health? How do you teach taking the e-health idea and then making that e-health as a systematic way? And then interlink that with the government institutions to say, here we have a human capacity who understands e-health, understands the business processes related to that, understands the implementation process. Now, if you have a governing structure built into place, then those two can complement each other and create economic opportunities. At the end of the day, better health outcomes also means better economic opportunities yes. for countries. Yes. So this is kind of a planning process that goes in both ways. So yes. business schools, I think, start need to think about structuring a curriculum that accounts for basic public health and private health uh, and basic ICT, the information and communication technology adoption of how best to develop and then create some monitoring and evaluation processes of these technical applications for better health outcomes. That way I think it would be a good package for institutions of higher learning to have a human capacity and then develop at the same time a country framework that can easily absorb this, ma yes. this uh, human power. I completely agree with you. In fact, that, that curriculum is so important not only that there's a joint curriculum where 
business school, health professionals, uh, government policymakers can all join together. But it would be great to synchronize that each, for example, in medicine, we have our own curriculum at our University of British Columbia that we are developing for our health professional students. But wouldn't it be fantastic to be able to link that to say, well, here's not just a health professional <coughs> looking at this. How do we benefit from affiliation with business school to look at the health management aspect of it? I completely agree with you about the development and implementation. Also a point that I think you've made very well at the conference is about sustainability. Mm -hmm. I mean, as health professionals, we wouldn't understand the intricacies of it. We're not trained for it. But having business school working together, we can then understand how can health contribute to health sustainability while we can look at economic sustainability at the same time. So at the end of the day, we don't just implement a system and just leave it alone, but to say, well, how do we build capacity and then build continuing sustainability of that for and, the and continued ownership. benefits? And ownership transfer. Yes. And, and accounting for how much does it cost to own yes. a, a, a particular yes. ICT application. Because uh, it, so at some point of time, the countries have to own, yes. the institutions have to own and, and, and run. It's not just for Kenya to get in a very good ICT based solution for health, but Kenya needs to own that. Yes. So I think that ownership transfer needs to be very much embedded. You know, I think the other domain of all of this, I think is uh, to start thinking about how do you facilitate this e-health strategy or a framework for nations. So in other words, uh, how can we regionalize this? Have a group of countries come in in one common place, such as, for example, in the university campus, and then think about a planning process of how to create a national framework mm. for e-health. Mm. Can universities and non-governmental organizations engage in facilitating governments to come together and then create a national plan? Uh, and I think if you regionalize in uh, Southeast Asia, South Asia, Central America, and the Caribbean, and Africa, and so on, uh, that would m create a momentum for economic opportunities. It creates uh, better health outcomes because health information systems and health systems begin to adapt to the new way of doing business. All of this can happen if institutions of higher learning can, can be the neutral mediator for facilitating governments to come in a common place. I think universities can do that easily. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, that academia partnership with governments mm -hmm. in looking at the forward planning and establish a framework is of benefit to both. I think academic institutions might be able to contribute mm -hmm. some of the evidence. How do we evaluate? How do we bring some of the evidence back to the table? And policymakers can then based on some of those evidence, but of course based on other factors, create certain policies. And it wouldn't be great if academic institutions can then further assist to say, now that we have new policy, how has that changed the environment? How does that implement the environment? So it becomes a symbiotic relationship, mm -hmm. if you will. And I think the other really exciting function of academic institution is not only to be this neutral ground where we can form this type of wonderful partnership, but the next generation. Yes, the fact absolutely. that we can actually work with the students, and very often, you know, it, it's about engaging the students, engaging the next generation, mm -hmm. so that this knowledge won't be lost in one generation, mm -hmm. but actually continue to perpetuate over time. Yeah, and I think I think also academic institutions can substantially contribute to help think about outcome indicators. How do you yes. measure yes. these systems, whether they're sustainable, yes. whether they can be maintained, yes. and what we want to get is what the system is giving. Yes. I mean, uh, that's a more an intellectual domain that academic institutions can quite well serve the purpose, especially students. You know, uh, graduate students, masters and PhD students can pick up topical areas and then start thinking about how best to work in this particular domain of e-health. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at the Australian School of Business, please visit knowledge.asb.com dot unsw dot edu dot au